Hey and welcome to a quick video I wanted to put together to talk about the IRQ capabilities of the Caravel harness from eFabulous. To cover the basics, let's start with understanding what an interrupt is. If you imagine that I'm the CPU, I'm reading these instructions and this slide is my program. Normally I'm fetching an instruction, following it, increasing the program counter, fetching the next instruction and so on. If the CPU supports interrupts, then what can happen is that while your program is executing, it can be interrupted. Interrupt. So let's see how this works with the Caravel ASIC harness from eFabless. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of moving parts here. So we're going to start off with the user project and how that actually generates the IRQ. So here we are in um, Caravel IRQ demo and the link to this repo is in the video description. Um, so this is forked from the Caravel user project from eFabless. So inside Verilog RTL, um, we've got a new um, design called IRQ Gen, and that has the same um, instantiation module interface as normal. And then we have a little state machine that waits for a pin to raise on the 16th bit of the logic analyzer. It copies in the first 16 bits of the logic analyzer to counter, and then starts counting and every cycle it counts down and then once it gets to zero it goes to state interrupt and sets the interrupt to one and if we go up here on line 66 you can see that we're setting the zeroth bit of the irq signal to be that interrupt that we just raised so that line is going to go up um, and we've got three outputs from the user project area that can go to the uh, caravel space so now that line has got to get through from the user project through the management SOC. So let's just take a look at the SOC to remind ourselves of that. Here's where our IRQ generator lives. And although we've only marked the wishbone and the logic analyzer, there's also these three new interrupt lines that come here. They're also isolated and they go through this management area and they need to be enabled. So let's look at how we do that. So in the Verilog DV directory, we've got a new directory called IRQ with a whole load of stuff in it. And in there, we've got some firmware. So let's take a look at the firmware. And we've got a register here called reg mproj IRQ, which is a um, location in memory defined in the defs.h file of Caravel. And we're setting that one bit to be high so that it matches the one bit of the IRQ we're raising. And so it's enabled and that signal is allowed through. So now the interrupt can be raised. It can get through the management SOC to the Pico RV32, but for the Pico RV32 to do anything, it also has an interrupt mask. So we need to deal with that. And we do that in start.s. So at uh, reset, we jump to start, uh, which initializes the register files um, does a little bit of hocus pocus, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then enables the interrupt. So here it, we've got to set it to be zero to allow the interrupt and the external interrupts from the user project area come into IRQs 12 to 14 on Pico RV32. Pico RV32 has its own interrupts for things like um, timers. So that finally brings us on to the interrupt handler. Um, and what happens with Pico RV32 is when it's instantiated, we set the interrupt address location. So in the management soc.v file, we find that the program address IRQ is set to zero. So that's going to be the very first address in RAM. And then if we look at where Pico RV32 is instantiated, this argument is passed in. So there we go there. So once the IRQ gets through to the Pico RV32, then what happens? It jumps to address zero in RAM and executes what's there. So what is at address zero in RAM? If we take a look at sections.lds, it's been adjusted from normal and it saves a little bit of the RAM. Um, this would normally be set to zero for the interrupt handler. So that's what this was doing in start.s. It writes directly to that zero address in RAM, these instructions, and these instructions here 
are the compiled versions of these instructions, which are basically just another jump to the right place. So the Pico RV32 jumps to address zero in RAM and then jumps to where the IRQ handler really is. So where is the IRQ handler? Right back here at the top. And what it's doing is saving all the registers and then jumping to an IRQ function and then retiring the instruction. So then finally, we make it back to our IRQ function and we can do something. And what are we doing? We're setting a flag to zero. So we've got to remember that that's got to be volatile. Um, so flag is down here, set to one. We set up the logic analyzer to load in 500 into that counter register and trigger it. And then we block forever. And then what happens is the user project area raises that interrupt. We do that jumping around. We come up here, set the flag to zero, break out of the root, out of the while loop, and then continue to do another test. So let's see it in action. And we get the test passed. So it's detected those interrupts. And now let's uh, take a look at the um, VCD file. So when the Pico RV32 starts running the firmware, it sets this status so that we can see this happening. Using the logic analyzer, it loads the 500 into the counter, which counts down, raises the interrupt here. We can see that going high. That comes through to the Pico RV32 interrupt on 12. And then this IRQ active line goes high until the IRQ is retired. We can see the mask is correct there. Um, we can also see what happens with the program counter. So um, on the interrupt, there we go. We're just jumping to address zero. There we go. Um, handle that interrupt, which does take quite a long, a lot of time. And then start the second test, which is basically just repeating the same thing. We see another interrupt being raised and serviced. So I hope that's useful if you want to use interrupts in your own design. And if you want some resources, here's the link for the IRQ demo, for the instructions for the IRQ handling in Pico RV32. Claire Wolf wrote this before the RISC-V instructions for IRQ handling was solidified. So this is something custom, not like anything else. And then here we've got the docs for Caravel IRQ, which are at the moment out of date. And that's why I hope this video is going to be useful. So I'll see you for the next one.